Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Susie and today I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite ways to address envelopes. And I wanted to share with you some of my favorite products for envelope calligraphy. So I know there's a lot of different things out there, but I'm just going to share with you a couple that I think can help to create beautiful envelope calligraphy. And so if you are ready, let's just jump right in. So I have some of my things here. I have my envelopes, I have some um, writing utensils, and I have a little bit of help with these lettering guides. I will link everything in the description box below. Um, I know with some of these products, there's a lot of different options um, online. And so I will just link for you the ones that I have, but as always, feel free to use what you have. So I'm gonna start out with showing you um, a couple of writing utensils that I like to use for envelope calligraphy. Now. One of the things that can happen when you're doing calligraphy on envelopes is if you're using a bigger brush pen, it can be hard to fit um, the lettering onto your envelope. So instead of using a brush pen, I like to use one of two things. I like to use a dip pen or I like to use a watercolor brush. And there are a couple of different reasons why I like both of these. I'll talk about some of the pros as we go on. Um, but one of them is because I can also use this white ink. So if you are using any kind of colored envelopes, um, I think white ink tends to look good on, I don't know, almost all of them. And I just think it looks super modern and I love the look of using white ink. So I like to use the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and I'll show you how I'm gonna mix that together here in just a little bit. I have tried different white inks and this is just my favorite and I think it's pretty much the only one I use. So let's go ahead and start with some envelopes. I have these green ones here. These are from Hobby Lobby. They're not perfect. Um, you can see they're kind of an inexpensive envelope. Um, I believe it was a 24 pack for $5 and you can typically get these on sale. I will say, especially this time of year, um, as I'm sending my Christmas cards, by the time I write on these and send them through the mail, they're probably not gonna look perfect anyway. So I don't mind using a um, more inexpensive type of envelope. But if you're doing something like a bridal suite or um, wedding invitations, you may prefer something a little bit more high quality. It's totally your preference, but I just wanted to point that out in case um, you are wondering how these envelopes hold up. And then I'll show you how they look when we do some lettering. So I'm gonna start with the paintbrush. For my paintbrush, I am going to be using the Pentel Aquash Water Brush. Now, this is a smaller size. This is what they look like when I buy them on Amazon. And I love to have these on hand because I think they're great for hand lettering. And then we are going to mix up a little bit of this um, Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White in with a little bit of water. So this is a little bit too thick. Um, I wanna thin it out a little bit. So I have some water and I have this little dish. This is from Tom's Studio, um, but you can use whatever you have on hand. And I'm just going to mix up some of that here to kind of make it more of a watercolor type of consistency. So it's hard to see because my dish is white, but you can see this is um, a little bit thinner than what I had before. It's kind of dripping off here. So this is a pretty good consistency. You can play around with it. You can have it thinner. Um, you just might find that it's not quite as opaque if you have a little bit more water, but I think this is pretty good for now. And then I am just going to dip my um, paintbrush in here and let her write on these envelopes. Now, one of the issues can be um, fitting your whole address into the envelope. And so you could use a guide here. Um, I have this one. This one can kind of help to get things centered. That is typically my struggle is getting things centered, um, but it's still not very long. So um, what you could do if you don't want to eyeball it is you could take a pencil and just lightly um, draw lines here to give yourself a little bit of a guide, or you could do your hand lettering just holding this into place. Um, I don't think this is gonna be enough space lengthwise for me, so I am personally just gonna eyeball it, but um, you can do whatever feels most comfortable for you. All right, so when it comes to this particular envelope, um, it doesn't love a lot of water, and so you'll see that sometimes I have to kind of go back and forth over it. Um, again, this is just a really inexpensive um, envelope, but you can definitely do something um, a little bit more high quality. But I think especially if you are just practicing or you're just kind of building up this skill, it's totally fine to start with something a little bit more inexpensive. One option that I like to do is do just the name in calligraphy and then um, do the rest of the lettering in like a block type style or you could even do a lowercase. You could even do, um, depending on what kinds of pens you're using, you could use like a brush pen for the name and then just a regular you know, fine liner or monoline pen for the address if you can match the colors. And so there are a lot of different options when it comes to creating beautiful envelopes. And honestly, it's one of those things that I think um, the more you practice, the easier it will become. 
the more you'll kind of get an eye for lining up the lettering so that it's kind of centered on the page. That is definitely a struggle spot for me. I don't do a ton of envelope calligraphy just for fun, just for like my own Christmas cards. So um, by the time I'm done doing all of my Christmas cards, I will probably feel a lot more confident in evenly spacing my lettering, but I just wanted to show you um, this example. And yeah, I also wanted to point out that this is not a real address. I know that some people get concerned when they see envelope calligraphy on Instagram or wherever. And um, yeah, this is just a fake address. Actually, if you are somebody who does hand lettering and you like to share it online and you are looking for some addresses to practice, I have a list of just completely made up names and addresses for you to practice with. If you want, you can grab those over on my website in the resource library. You can go to howtohandletter.com slash resource library and find the list there if you want to just have some easy um, names and addresses to practice so that you don't have to try to think of them while you're practicing your lettering. And then you don't have to worry about sharing anybody's real address on the internet. <laughs> So I'll link that in the description box below if you want to grab that download. But otherwise, let's go ahead and move along to dip pen hand lettering. For the dip pen hand lettering, I'm going to be using a black ink. So I'm going to show you on this craft paper um, type of um, envelope. And I am just using this dip pen and I have this Tom Studio ink. I also like this Higgins calligraphy ink. So I'll link this stuff in the description box so that you don't have to remember it, but um, I believe this one I can sometimes find in stores. So yeah, but today I'm going to use the Tom Studio so that I can put it right onto my dip pen. Um, I know I said I would link everything in the description box, but I actually can't remember where this calligraphy pen is from. I got two that are kind of similar and I can't remember which is which, so I don't want to lead you astray. But um, you can definitely just use whatever dip pen you already have. And I got a little bit of ink on this one, so I'm just gonna use this as my tester. And I'm going to put the ink right onto my dip pen. So one of the great things about dip pen calligraphy for um, envelopes is that you can write a little bit smaller. So you don't have to worry about trying to squish a whole um, address onto your envelope. If you're writing kind of large, you can typically do it how you would normally do dip pen calligraphy and that sizing should fit nicely onto your envelope. For this one, I am going to go ahead and use this little lettering guide just so that I can um, not write it a slant if I can help it. So one thing I do like to do when I get to the last line for the zip code is to try and space that one out evenly. So I will try to um, figure out where the middle is and then add the middle number and then kind of fill them in um, on either side so that they are kind of at least somewhat centered because I think that kind of finishes it off and makes it look really nice. So um, yeah, I think that you could do this similarly to the first one where you did calligraphy on the first line and then print for the rest, or you could do calligraphy through the whole thing. I don't find it to be super difficult to do calligraphy um, with the dip pen as far as um, sizing goes. So um, yeah, it's just a personal preference. If you guys want to know more about calligraphy using a dip pen or using watercolor brush, let me know in the comments below which one you would like to learn or what specific questions you have about that. Um, I know that's kind of like a niche thing. Not everybody wants to use a dip pen or not everybody wants to use watercolor, but I personally think um, both of those are kind of my favorites when it comes to hand lettering. And I think it's because you just get such a beautiful finished look and I love to practice hand lettering just for the fun of it, but I also absolutely love it because it is such a useful hobby. You can do it for fun, but then you can also like make your own gift tags or make beautiful calligraphy on your holiday envelopes. Um, you can, I don't know, you can just do so many things with hand lettering and so that's why I love it and that's why I love these two mediums for hand lettering specifically because they just provide such a beautiful, um, finished product. And so if you have any specific questions or want to learn more about dip pen calligraphy or about um, hand lettering using watercolors, I guess this technically wasn't watercolor because I was using um, Dr. P.H. Martin's ink, but we were using a watercolor brush, so it's kind of like watercolor lettering. Um, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will leave that link again for you if you want to grab those addresses to practice. I will also leave a playlist here if you are a beginner and, or wanting to learn more about hand lettering. I have a whole bunch of videos to help you learn calligraphy and hand lettering, so make sure to hop over to that playlist and check those out if you are wanting to learn more about how to hand letter. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more, you can find me on Instagram. I will link that in the description box below. Otherwise, I will see you over in that next video.